Hello, hello. This is the Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas. We're back for another episode. I guys, I hope that you guys are enjoying all these episodes. I'm having fun making them, and uh, you guys should be subscribing to this channel. Like it, love it, do all those things. I have somebody um, that I think you guys will be super excited to meet and know a little bit more about. I'm excited to have him on my couch and be a part of the Private Talk podcast. Um, so guys, give it up for Marcus Black. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up. How are you? How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you for having me, Mrs. Miss Alexis Texas. Oh, you know Ms. it. Miss Texas. Know. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so proper. I like it. Such a gentleman. Yeah, I, you know, uh, military brat. Hey, me as well. Yeah. Yes, yes. What branch? Navy. Air Force. Yeah, I was born on base. Like, me as well. Yeah. What part? Uh, North Island, like San Diego. All right. I yeah. was in Panama. Oh, dig that. Yeah, Albrook Air Force Base. Check you out. Mm -hmm. Got more in common than I thought already. Check you that know out. Know it. Look, that's how I liked it. It's supposed to be a private conversation, so feel comfortable. Yeah. Relax. Is your first loose. time doing this? This is my first podcast. Yeah, you really good. Thank you. Thank you. I, um, you know, it's something that I'm new to, but it's mm. something that I, you know, I have a lot to say. I, I'm a very talkative person, but I feel like okay. I've never had the right platform to really get everything that I really want to say in the appropriate way that right. Miss Texas wants to do. Right. So I feel like private talk is, a, you know, the best way to do it. So sure. thank you for coming here. And I hope you thank feel you as comfortable me. as I do with I having awesome, you as a guest. Yeah, listen, I walked in, you know. Shots in 1942, uh -oh, you know what I'm saying? Uh -oh. Salmon and all type of other little vibes. So, you know, we I'm, do it big here. Yeah, you know? I'm, and, so, and so here we are. So, I'm comfy and I'm ready. I'm so still Texas. Ready. Go big or go home, you know? You hit it. Everything's bigger in Texas. I saw, I heard. So, welcome. All welcome. Right. So, let our, um, you know, listeners out there introduce yourself. Tell us your background. Let yeah, us know what yeah. Marcus Black is all about. Okay. So, for those of you who do not know, man, uh, my name is Marcus Black. Uh, songwriter, uh, executive, um, TV personality, uh, just, you know. You do it all. I try. Which know. one is your favorite of all those things? I'm in a transitional point right now, you know. Uh, I grew up just, you know, performing. So, like, you know. Uh, performing meaning, like, you know. Like being on stage. Okay. Actually on stage, performing in a studio, working on my music. Um, writing, just the arts is, has always been my favorite, you know what I mean? Um, TV just kind of fell in my lap. I ain't really look for that or work for that. But you like it? Uh, I enjoy the platform. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I enjoy it kind of like this. I, I, I enjoy, um, I appreciate the opportunity to say um, my piece and, and have influence so, um, and people care about, you know, my opinion. I think that's cool. Of course, you know, we were speaking yeah. a little bit earlier about like the whole like the platform things and how stigmas can be so easily like taken, mis you know, cons misconstrued so easily yeah. with all those things. It's like yeah. we get so much criticism because we put ourselves out there. But having platforms like this is such a like a great way to just like speak our truths. Yeah, it's necessary. For sure. So let us uh, let the mm -hmm. private talk podcast people let their let us know what your social media platforms are. Where could they find you? <clears throat> Yeah, Marcus Black, uh, M V R C U S B L V C K. I put it with V's because I, man, I wanted to go look up, like, I wanted to go put this Marcus Black in regular, and somebody with like five followers has it locked down. I'm pissed. I'm trying to find it so I can buy it. It's always that one thing. It's like they've had it like a long time ago, and that they don't, it's inactive, but you Come don't on. know how to, like. If you're listening, can I have my name back, please? Can he have his name back, please? please. Let's, let's find a way to get him his name back. I'll buy it from you. Hey, let's ha let's make it happen. If yeah. I, I I hope this happens because I know the struggle of that whole. It's just yeah. frustrating because yeah. it's easier just to have your straight up name. Yeah, if you're listening, uh, contact Miss Texas, please, and um, I I pay you for it. I I just want I just want my handle. You heard him. He spoke the truth. He just wants his handle. Yeah. All right, so what are you currently doing right now? What are you? What are your projects? What What's going on with Mr. Marcus Black? You know, so so as of right now, man, I, I really just been focused on um, finding that sweet balance between um, between business and, and family. You know, I've always had so many things going on at so many different times. I, I signed my first record deal at 19 years old. You know what I mean? So um, I just had a little girl. Awesome. Um, she just turned six months yesterday. Congratulations. You know what I mean? So um, just... Find up like business businesses that that goes no matter you know, you know what I'm saying no matter what you know what I mean um I'm a uh, you're obviously I'm, an entrepreneur so it's one of yeah. those things where it's like you have all these things you know you do music you're a you know 
are you doing any new yeah. things? I heard from I've, somebody that you're doing some new executive stuff. Yeah, so maybe. Just so what, what are you transitioning into? So, so 100, 100 ENT is official. You okay. know what I'm saying? Congratulations. Um, shout out to my dog, Wack 100. And, um, you know, we got artists that we're excited about, man. Uh, shout out to Kiddo Curry. You know what I'm saying he's from the south side of Chicago. Uh, we got the Coyotes. They from the Hawthorne, Inglewood area. You know what I'm saying? We got Flash Gotti. He's from Kansas City. All right. So A&R and some projects, doing some managing. Um, looking forward to going back on the next season of Love and Hip Hop because uh, we took we took this season off and it was necessary. Just so was there reasons why? Was it just because you needed because you just had a baby, or is it because things that you were a little in the hot seat because of the last seasons you were on? What yeah, I mean, tell us was, a little bit more about it? You know, it was really just about uh, wanting just to you know to, like the entertainment business is very demanding, and it's like man, I don't you know I just wanted my girl to have like a peaceful harmonious pregnancy you know what i'm saying and and i didn't want to be dealing with the shit you know what i'm saying i don't want to go on tv bitches popping out of nowhere yeah. yo i used to fuck with you da, 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 da. i don't man we just had a baby can i have some peace please like yeah you know because they come they come out of nowhere and they and the more popular, are they all factual or you know is it they are they true are they really out of nowhere or is it scripted because they like trying to say, throw a wrench in things or is it do you does it really been a problem because from past seasons it appears that it may have been a problem at one time yeah miss uh miss texas that's, so my, comfortable. That's, that's, that's my nickname for you i like it um so you know a lot of times i ain't gonna lie I be getting, that should be true i want the truth <laughs> <laughs> don't nah, feel afraid nah, like you i know, said here at true. private talk with alexis texas yeah. i want you to feel comfortable it's not you know it's all it's this is a comfortable space no nah, that'd be true i ain't gonna lie to you like especially last season um but when I say it comes out of nowhere, it's like I had no idea that these people were about to come to the show. You know what I mean? And then, so you did have any interactions with them. You just didn't know they were gonna pop up at those I times. I didn't know. Like now, I know that. Like because they were either probably in their DMs being like, "Hey, trying to get there like fifteen seconds staff, or whatever." And the staff, the producers on Love and Hip Hop, they open to they open to like all the shit. Of course, because you need a show. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, the drama. it's it's reality TV. It's supposed to be your life. So if you're doing things, your life is going to be a, you can't hide your yeah, personality. But, you know, my perception of it was always different even before I was on the show. I was like, okay, this show is about girls and their significant others, you know what I'm saying? But it's like I'm like, why the fuck is on me? Like, but did you ever at that time? Girls. But did you at ever time watch the reality show before? Because it is, but it's about what y'all do to those girls that make Damn. it so interesting. So you picking sides out the gate? <laughs> no, I don't pick sides. I'm just seeing the truth on each side. For me, what I for me is like, I'm a Gemini, so mm. I'm the truest of a Gemini. I see both sides of every story. There's good and bad in everybody. It's a circumstance, you know what I mean? And it's as long as you I can own you up to your, I am not. I'm the 25th. At the eighth, the cusp, I think, is the 18th. Oh, I thought you said the 5th. No, 25th. Time. No. That's what happened. Not Cinco de Mayo. That's why. So you're a Gemini. That explains a lot, actually. I am. I know okay. what I'm going to do. I feel like that was a shade. That was a shade. You're a Gemini. You know? <laughs> Well, how come I don't have like buttons that I can just hit? Because this is a podcast with Alexis Texas, and we have control here at my private talk. Oh, it's, okay. Yes. You're, you're controlling. Yeah, I'm a Gemini. I just told you. Yeah, That's with two sides. But why? what that says is why I don't pick any sides is because I know the truth. That's exactly, you know, I've been in the adult industry. I know, the, you know, the the stigmas of each side, the, the, the what is it, the... What is it? The catch 22s from yeah. from guys to females to every stigma of what yeah. it is. So for me, I choose no side. It's just the truth. People, you know, we grow up, we evolve over time. Mm. We, you know, we change. We see certain things happen, life changing moments that sure. happen that maybe make you grow up a little bit more and you sure. realize what's sure. more important to you. If it's family, work, whatever. And that's, yeah. you know, that's just part of growing up. Yeah. But it's like owning your truth. You putting yourself and your, your family out there, you have to be warranted to those things just the truthful situation so did that make you grow up a little bit more or make you maybe want your relationship to work more because you saw it more prep like in the in the in the light of what they were doing to you or i mean it just makes you be a little more careful you know um at the end of the day you know the the down part is like losing like relationships that like with people that you really rock with like for example oh, excuse me that 42 got to me Ooh. um like last season it was a chick that was I used to deal with that was my friend. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and and now we not so like we ain't even friends no more. Like you like you took it, you got it checked, and got you, it and too you, far for sure. Yeah, like why and you that's let what, them, why you let them do that? And that's what unfortunately happens in these situations where you probably feel like you have to backtrack a little bit is because right. it's like, hey, I wasn't, you're just the homie, and right. now you were looking for an easy, you know what I mean? And so that's you know it sucks yeah. because for me is 
my shape, how I got it is like because of me, I am I usually have a lot of guy friends naturally because mm-hmm. I just sure gravitate. But that usually means to everyone else, oh, you're fucking all of them. No, I don't fuck any of them. Right. I'm the homie. I'm the wingman. I'm like I right. listen to them. I'm the I whatever. Can see that, though. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but people. The girlfriends don't get that until they know me. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And, but for me, it's like, I don't I don't judge either way. You know, I'm going to tell you when you're right, when you're wrong. I'm going to yeah. tell you all of it. You may not like it, but that's also why we're friends. Right. So I, I get, you know, and that sucks for being in like that. So would you do reality TV? You know, I don't think I would. Why not? Um, for me, because I've given so much a part of my life in a private way, my personal life is too private for me to do that. I get that. And for me, I feel like um, I this as much as. This as much as the reality that you're going to get in the truthfulness from me is, is why I wanted to do something like this was, you know, it, it had my voice on it. It wasn't cut from somebody else. It wasn't made me to believe or looked a certain way. It was my truth, me talking to real people and, you know, getting our truths out and just understanding my truth and knowing that at the end of the day, yeah, I did porn one time, like long time ago, and I don't fault anything because I've done it. And I had a really great career and I love the business, but that mm-hmm. doesn't define who I am. Mm-hmm. It's just a part of what I did. Sure. And so for me, it's like, I want people to see the realness of me and that I am educated enough to have a conversation with anyone who sits here and make you feel comfortable and, and just speak your truth, you know, and I want you to feel comfortable as well. I'm comfy. You like that? Yeah, 1942 like or just because Alexis Texas made you comfortable? I think it's a combination of both. Well, thank you. I yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't, I can't, we can't just throw out the 42, like, you know, but I think it's- Hey, I am, I, I will say at one time I like really hated 1942 and then I was like, I recently had it and I was like, hmm, right. I've been missing out. So I'm not going to hate on it. Yeah. So you said you just had a baby. Congratulations with that. Thank you. How did, you, you want me to do that for you? Turn me up, Lex. Yeah, what is your baby's name? My name is Shy Summer. Beautiful. Shy Summer, like Beautiful. Chicago Summer. I like that. So, so you're from Chicago, so that's where it came from? Yeah, Southside. Awesome. Um, but so we just didn't want to leave her out, though, cause, because so um, my little girl name is Brooklyn, okay. right? And then my son, um, well, Brooke, Brooke's son, that's that's my son. My, that's, my, that's, my, that's my bonus. Respect. Yeah. Uh, his name is London. So we already have Brooklyn and London. So it's like, man, let's just finish out the thing. You know what I mean? And so you got Brooklyn, London, and you got Shy. So was there a reason why you kept the pregnancy like a secret? Or is it something that you just, because like you said, the, like the show thing, you didn't want the drama, you wanted her to have a peaceful just peace. thing. It, is, it, was, it was a lot that it's, I mean, it's a beautiful moment. Sharing that with your partner and you're just like yeah. living in that truth is, yeah. I mean, it bonds you guys closer as well. And, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. I mean, it was a, she, she it was, it was a high risk pregnancy. You know what I'm saying? From, from the, from the get go. And, um, I'm, you know, <clears throat> Without saying too much, we just wanted a little. We just wanted the privacy, and 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 I'm I'm only not saying so much so she can tell her side because I'm gonna have her come down here and rock with you. Yeah, yeah you know I like that. Saying? But um, yes. and, and I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to step on, on her POV. But I just wanted her to be able to do it like do it her way. You know what I'm saying have like peace and just not have to deal with you know the blogs and everybody saying this and saying that. Like we don't we and and it, and it was successful. You know what I'm saying? Like everything was cool. So with having the baby, she's six months. Has that changed like y'all's relationship? Has it made it closer intimately? Yeah, it has it been like how is it? How is closer? it closer? Nah, I don't get no ass. That shit is that shit. It's all crazy. baby. It's crazy. Baby sleeping in the bed with us. How do you what do you, how do you deal with that? Man, uh, it's tough. I mean, you, you gotta like you gotta plan like you gotta plan out just that. Like you can't just you can't just Parent be spontaneous life. and just vibe. It's like, hey babe, like you know, shorty sleep like date night. Like it's like. It's like you got to plan it like a date. That's cute, though, but that should keep the relationship fresh. So with that being... Uh, no, it doesn't. I mean, if you have to plan it a little bit, it makes... Obviously, you wish you could be more spontaneous, but planning it, I mean, to me, it's like you're going out of your way. You're planning it to make effort, so that's showing me that you... You don't always want to plan it, though. Kind of just... Well, then just bend her over sometimes. Yeah, but I, like that... Yeah... Okay, with kids. your relationship wise, in front of the kids, Lex. I know, no, that's that's for, that's the other segment. We're not talking about that. <laughs> We're gonna wait till Brooke comes on here. We're gonna talk about right, that. But okay, so enough. with your relationship and you guys both being in the same industry, mm-hmm. how do you guys deal with that? And you having a new baby. So do one of you guys when I one's working, it. one's mm-hmm. whatever. Just like that. Is it really tough because you guys are in the same industry? Do, is it there struggles within that? Just like maybe competing or like how does tell me a little bit about that? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a thousand times easier because we're in the same industry. You know what I'm saying? We're both entrepreneurs, so we make our own schedule. So nobody tells us when to come to work. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So because we make our own our own schedule, we can we can plan our day out accordingly. 
So, you know. Does that always work out, though? Is there times where it's just like it's. Well, it, it, it sucks on evenings like this when we both wanted to come down here and, and do this together. So it's still adjusting, period. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but not, you know, just 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 in the beginning, why, why, why I shot super young. You know what I'm saying? We got to just, we can't just send it to the babysitter. You know what I mean? Um, our other ones, like, you know, they're eight, nine years old. You know what I mean? So it's a little easier that you can have the babysitter come over but with this one. So, yeah, it it, it, it definitely is uh takes some adjusting to. You know what I mean? But it's worth it and it's cool. I like that. You it's worth I mean? it. Yeah. You hear it. Cool. Private pod. Blah, 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 blah. Let me say that back again. Private talk podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. with Alexis Texas. You're doing a great job, by the way. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you and your honesty. It's, it takes a lot for someone. I just met you and just mm-hmm. being open like that. I respect yeah. that a lot. Yeah, so you yeah. guys out there listening to us, make sure you subscribe and like to the channel. There'll be a lot more stuff going on Absolutely. here. We are going to keep this going. And um, yes. Yeah, so I want to know a little bit more. You're from Chicago. Yeah, from the south side so of Chicago. So do yeah. you are where do you currently live now? I live in L.A. Okay, so how was the transition from you being from Chicago to LA? Uh, so so man, because I'm from Texas and right. and I moved to LA when I was 21, and you know the transition for me was, I mean, it's very different. Yeah, I mean it's a culture shock. But uh, so so I went from Chicago, and before I moved to LA, I moved to um the Inland Empire. So I moved to this area called like the city called Marino Valley, which is about an hour and a half from LA, and I did I went, I went to high school down there. And so, um, and then after high school, I moved back to Chicago again. But I was already familiar with the culture and how California moves. You know what I mean? Did the mic go off? You got just felt like it went out from my headphone. Um, but yeah, so it was. It was. Uh, you know, it's Chicago is a very different place. It's very different from LA. And um, different in what ways? Always. So you you got you got the you you have the weather, which is the obvious one. It's freezing. You know what I mean? Like. Um, I was talking to some of my friends about uh, All Star Weekend this year is in Chicago, right? And um, and I'm like, everybody's talking about going. I'm like, yo, y'all don't want to go. I'm telling, like February in Chicago, it doesn't like get the any, worst. Doesn't time. get any colder than that, right? So between that, you know, you got gang culture um, that's completely different. Everything that this 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 it's almost it's almost no similarities. You know what I mean? Just uh, it's a complete culture shock. You know what I mean? Going even. Chicago has has one of the highest uh, African American populations in the you know what I'm saying in, in the U S. and then you come to you know L A. which is I want to say seven or eight percent black. You know what I mean? Um, it's just completely different. You know what I mean? But um, so how long have you been living in L A. I've now? been living in L A. ten years. Ten years. So yeah. when did you find like you feel like really adapted? Uh, about about six years ago, seven years ago. I love LA though, you know, and I'm, you know, I, this is home. I'm not, I'm not leaving. Like I'm not. I'm the same LA. way for me. Like why I ask is because me being who I am, I'm from Texas, come out here. I've been here oh, 12 years or I don't know. I don't date myself, but yeah, but long, for a long time now. But okay. it's like, for me, it's like by the five year mark, it's like, it was home. You know, it was very different for me. I remember the first time, like looking out the window, like, cause in Texas, everything's flat. Yeah, and here I was like, oh my Midwest, God, there's mountains and I don't know what it is. So it was just like a little kid in a candy store. And it was just very like a new world. You see yeah. it in movies, you see all these things. And then right. you like put it into perspective like, oh, that's Ventura Boulevard. And now it's just like you do that every day. So Are it's you a like, Spurs fan? I was, yes. You know, it's, So how you feel about like Kawhi being a Clipper? Uh, you know, I was a Spurs fan for a long time growing up. And, mm. and I can't say that I'm not, but the organization has really changed, you know, a lot. And him leaving us a long, t- you know, a while back, it was a big, yeah. you, know, uh, you know. It was huge. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, at that point, what me being, say, like, saying all that, I'm more of an individual, like, player based, whatever. I'm, You're you a know, player. Yeah. Okay. Don't crush a lot. But. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I played basketball myself. So I played, you know. Get out of here. I did. I did. I did. Don't, don't, don't let this pretty face fool you. I played basketball. I, um, I played for. It was a- nice. I was nice. I played for a junior college for a little while. And, oh, you um, was nice. Hey, yeah, yay! Cheers to that. Hey. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> it's funny because a lot you of guys don't it? respect it. Like they're just like, they're like, "Oh, you're a girl." They say you can play, but I'm like, okay. And then nah. like I would play with guys when I first came here, and, and back home it'd be different because the guys I grew up with, so they respected it. But coming here, it was just like a whole new like, like getting jumped in in basketball thing. Mm. So they would just like first they would like realize it, and then they like. Try to hurt me, and I'm just like, come on now. That's corny. My face is too pretty. I can't do that. I have to work tomorrow. I can't do that. That's corny when <laughs> guys can't. do that. I know some. I know some females that are, that are, that are bust 
kill guys. You know, at one point, you know, I haven't played in a really long time. Mm. Um, It was a a love-hate thing for a long time. Um, Yeah. So I stopped playing because someone made me hate it. So So what brought you to L.A.? What brought me to L.A.? The industry. So being in the adult, my background, the adult industry. Mm. Um, And so, yeah, I did that for over 10 years. Okay. And when my first. I did a movie, then moved out to LA, and then became Alexis Texas. Not, so did, like, not overnight. Um, it was just, definitely a, a, a over time thing. Like you said, you know, you putting in work in the music mm. field and or music and entertainment stuff with like yourself. It yeah. it takes time. It's not like you do it once and it's hey, everybody likes you. You know, it's right, right. it's very like it, it's definitely put in work. Yeah, yeah. So like, what's like how how did you transition into that's because it's not like you know. Just like a, like a, like a. Transition into what? What I'm doing right now here at Private Talk with Alexis Texas? No. Transition into what? Being an adult film star? Yeah. How'd you just, how'd you transition into that from just like Hot seat. I like this. See, this, this makes you feel comfortable. I'll answer some questions from you. Here at uh, the Private Talk uh, podcast with Alexis Texas, I want everyone to feel comfortable. So I want these questions as much as I give you these questions. Well, that's what makes it fun. I I agree. So you guys, you listening out there, make sure you subscribe and you like to this channel because we're going to get the real shit from Alexis Texas. Let's go. All right. So the transitioning of what it was. Um, For me, um, I don't think it was a transition. It's something that, like you said, doing the the reality stuff, whatever, uh-huh. kind of fell into your lap. It yeah. kind of fell into my lap as well. So how I got into the business, for all of you who are fans out there that don't know my yeah. background, um, okay. it was uh, the first time that they did reality porn, per se. So it was a company called Shane's World doing, it was like trying to do girls that had never done scenes before, and I was the prodigy of that movie. So back in the day, because DVD World was really big, um, it, movies came you did a movie and it didn't come out for months later mm. and also is there's so much out there that I was like finding a needle in a haystack so sure. me being approached I got approached by these people coming into a bar and they were kind of were asking these questions long story short um they called me and or no they came into the bar they asked me like hey if you want to do this call me after uh, you work blah, blah 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 they didn't call me I called I texted them and I was like hey guess you didn't really want me in your movie anyways because me being me, I don't like rejection. Mm-hmm. Didn't really want to be in a movie. I just was like, hey, well, why didn't they call me? Right, right, so right. then they called me immediately and was like, oh, my God, I, we didn't think you want to do it. So they're like, if you want to, we'll come around and we'll come and get you right now. So they kept me on the phone knowing that if I got off the phone, I'd be like, hell no, I'm not doing this. So <laughs> they came and picked me up and still not knowing what I really got myself into, but got in the car. Yeah. <laughs> So this horrible. is incredible. This sounds so horrible. This is fucking so awesome. I got into a <laughs> You gotta be kidding. This is incredible. So I got into the car, whatever, and we were just kind of talking. And then, um, it, yeah, so we were looking for a place, and they were kind of basically talking to me like what I was gonna do, blah, blah, blah. And for me, at the time, being a college student and, you know, the, what they were offering me, I was like, man, I could pay a lot of things. And I would have sexual relations with this person anyway, so why not get paid for it? And there's so much porn out there now, like, no one's going to know little old me in Texas never doing anything, so fuck it. So I was, whatever, at this point I was like, I've already gotten in the car. You're not, there's no really turning back. <laughs> there was if I wanted to <laughs> yeah, right, say right, no. Right. Yeah, but there, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So but then, why turn back for what? Exactly. Go big or go home. Yeah. So we proceeded. So we proceeded to look for a place to to do this scene. Right. And so we also realized we didn't have anything. So there was a flea market conveniently there. So they bought it. Went to the flea market and bought a blanket. This shit gets better and better. <laughs> every, like what the fuck? A flea market? You can't make this shit up. You can't. I don't think I've ever said this story. Like I've said it to people, but I don't think I've ever said it anywhere that knows it. But anyway, so yes, the flea market got a blanket. So then we go. Down the way. And in Texas, like, it's there's like it's flat, so there's a lot of land. So we are driving down the road, and then there's an off-road, and they start driving down it, which means there's somebody's land, and people's land, meaning it's like a ranch or something. So it's like hundreds of acres of land. Yeah, they don't know. And they don't really know. So yeah. so you think or hope. Right. So we go down this thing, not really still sure what the hell I'm, fucking I'm, I'm really doing, but I'm like, let's go. So anyways, I'm doing this. So we go under this big oak tree, and they put the blanket down, we start, and this is, mind you, the first time I've ever had someone watch me, film me, have sex. Other, I mean, no one ever filmed me at the time that I had sex with, but f- watching me. 
And so it was kind of like, so the first time I remember I was like covering my chest, like I didn't want anybody to look at me, but I didn't really know because you didn't know what's going on. And at the same time doing that, looking around being like, someone's going to come out and shoot us with a shotgun because we're on somebody's land. And in right. Texas, people can fucking care, like conceal and care. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. They don't fuck I mean, around, it's, it's especially if you're trespassing. So I'm like, man, what did I get myself into? Anyways, that didn't happen. Thank like, baby Jesus. And um, yeah, so we did the scene and then we... Yeah, I went back and then I started. So anyway, so they left. I continued a conversation or a, a relationship with the guy that I did the scene with and never thinking I'd ever do a scene again. He hit me up a couple months later and was like, hey, a company called Bang Bros wants to shoot you. Would you come out there and shoot with me? I don't know who Bang Bros is. And at that time, I don't think anybody knows who Bang Bros is. Um, so I was like, OK, if I go out there with you, I'll do it. So I went out there, did the whole thing with him. Incredible. And I was like, man. I really like this. So it was just like, you. I didn't know what it was, but when it came into the whole thing, it was like, I liked it. And for me, I was very open, always open about my sexuality. And for me, I think I express myself like it's an art. And I feel like I was never afraid of my sexuality. So for me, it's how I expressed myself in a comfortable, respectful, and comfortable environment. So for me, the, the more that it evolved in the business is why I feel like it made me who I am today and a woman not only owning my sexuality, but just experiencing things that I probably wouldn't have at certain times if I wasn't allowed allowed to or like given the opportunity in the business that I was in. Can we hit the clap button? Hey. Nah, because let me wait, let me let me wait for the crowd to stop going crazy. They're just all loving this stuff. Yeah, no, that's really dope. And, and you know, um, I think it's important for us to tell the to to, to tell our truths, you know what I'm saying? I, it 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 these are things that people don't think about. You know what I mean? Um, we're people. But I think that's what humanizes you know what I mean? us. You're, you're a human. Like, we, like, motherfucker, like, we're, like, we're all, like, like it's My crazy. Once, I, you're on a step, once, you, once, you, once you're on a pedestal, people just act like you're so far away. It's like, bro, like, we all have the same thoughts. We all go through the same things. It's just, you know? I agree with that. For me, what I always say is like when people are like, oh, my God, like when they talk to you, they're like, you're just so cool or this or that or whatever. I didn't think that you would even talk to me. Yeah. I always say to each his own is like my motto. What works for you to me not work for me. But we at the end of the day, we all put our pants on every single day like each other. Yeah, it doesn't make sure. me any different than you because I chose to do what I did Does because you chose to do what you did. It doesn't make you different. If you respect me as a human, I respect you, Absolutely. your feelings, your anything. You know what I mean? And that's just the way how society and the world should work but unfortunately that's not always how it is but it's Absolutely. like it's you know it's, i feel like that's what it should be because we all fucking deserve that motherfucking shit that's a true motherfucking texas that's a true i feel like we're like we've talked enough we've um we've done all that stuff and you've definitely I want the truth. given me all your truths yeah and so i feel like yeah. we're like we're comfortable now yeah i feel i definitely feel comfortable i feel like and that's the home. If I, I walk down the street, I see it. But like, man, that's my dog. Like, so you wouldn't turn the other way and be like, oh my God. I just no, 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 no. Absolutely. Because I get that sometimes too, where some people are like, I know you here in this situation, but not in this situation. No, no, no. no. That's and that's corny. a stigma that I'm trying to like get away from. I'm not just that big, bad porn girl. I'm like a person with feelings. And I do a lot of fun stuff, just like this podcast. And this is, you know, going to speak my truth. And yeah. here at the and you got a jump podcast, shot. I do have a jump shot. Yeah. Hey, maybe one day I'll show it to you. Look, see, look. Nah, all right. If I if I challenged you, you think you could beat me? I oh think I would God. win. Are you really competitive? And I'm trying to stay away from it because I think it's corny when a guy goes at a girl like, "Girl, what?" I'll yeah, it's it's another. it's really not that. I mean, it really can't compare. But I mean, like, even though each person can be, we all have our own talents. I mean, a man, you're just bigger than me. Like, I mean, as good as I could be, I'm mean, not. You know. I still believe in myself. Alexis. I'm still my biggest fan. Alexis. But I could never dunk on you. I could never dunk anyways. Alexis. But I got to mean jump shot. Alexis, you, you can't do nothing with me on the basketball court. That's a guarantee. Hey. Like, you don't have to like, yeah, you, you don't. I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. Oh, you went to the Bernie on me. That's crazy. Yeah, Bernie. You weren't supposed to use Bernie against me. I'm a Chicagoan. What? what, what that you, ain't right. What you want to talk about Bernie? That ain't right. You said what? What you want to talk about, Bernie? You said Chicago in the house. Bernie, yeah, yeah, I used them yeah. against you, but I didn't use them against you. Yeah, I used so them for so, you. so now I was telling a story earlier. So, um, when I so when I was a shorty, I remember I might have been like uh, ten, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I was a kid though, 
Um, and I met I met Bernie Mac. He was uh he was he used to manage this rest this uh fast food little restaurant called Docs. It was like a fish spot. Um, so this had, before he was big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was the manager of it. And so like um, we went in there. I, I think my mom knew him or some shit like that. Cause they were talking or whatever. But Bernie Mac, like that's that's he's the fun, funniest guy in the world to me. You know what I'm saying? That's like that's that's my king of comedy. I know everybody. You know, you got people that would be like Martin or Eddie Murphy or, you know, Richard Pryor. I got to go Bernie. And then I go there. I get to everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Is that just because of Chicago love? I just think he, I don't, me being from Chicago, maybe I can connect to him more. But, like, he's just funny as shit. He's just, like, the Kings, of, his set on, on Kings of Comedy, I think that's one of the best sets I've ever seen in my life. So that's all-time favorite. He's oh, my favorite. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Your yeah, all-time sure. favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I respect Without that. question. Chicago in the house. Yeah. Hey, can I ask you a question? So, can I ask you a question? I guess you can ask me. All right, all right, all right. So. I feel comfortable. We're friends now. So yeah, you I home. feel like, you know, you can you can ask me a question. Yeah, this, for sure. This is how you get to know people better. So, um, I had a lot of jobs growing up. You know what I'm saying? that Like, where did you work before you moved to LA? Did you ever, like, I know you were in school. Like, right after did LA? You have a, you ever had a nine to five before? Yeah, I have. Where'd you work? So I've had multiple jobs. I mean, I didn't come from anything myself. I didn't come from nothing, but I was definitely middle class and had to, from I was 16, you had, you had to get a job to, to get anything in life. Cause it was 16, like, out the gate. So where'd you work? 16. So I worked at, um, at a nursing home. I was a get personal the- care assistant. So basically I fed all the patients and I spoke with them and I, made, I changed all their beds and spoke with them at night and did all that stuff. You know, so so in order to do a job like that, whether you're talking about child care, being a teacher, or anything that has to do with, like, hands-on, dealing with people like that, especially especially that particular job, you can't just do that. Like, you have to actually care about people. You have to actually have a heart. You know what I mean? That's for sure. For, especially for a first job, it was, um, it was definitely unique to see, like, the whole, like, it, you see definitely life and death. Yeah, you know? on a regular and, basis. And right? it's... Um, and, I didn't really know at the time, but I know now older, being older, I know I, I'm an empath. And so I very like I in tune to people's energies and feelings and, and whatnot. So it was really easy for me to talk to these people because it was like they were just vulnerable. And sometimes mm-hmm. it was like good and bad situations, whatever. But you just learned a lot. And um, but yeah, it, I feel like it definitely shaped me in certain ways. I think it shaped me to the point to know that at the as sad as it is the realization is there's an end to everybody's life and it's you know it's not it, it's it's unfortunate when it happens sooner than it yeah. you know that it should happen but there's yeah. always going to be a birth and a death and you know it's and that's just the reality you ever had, you ever had a, like a like an older like an older man like at the home try to like hit on you like an old guy no i no. didn't no i more got warned by all the old ladies to mm-hmm. be like and it was the funniest thing is because i'm uh, part Puerto Rican, and so there was this like old Puerto what? Rican lady. Yeah, I'm Puerto Rican, German, Norwegian. So uh, I that's love Norway. The, the big booty comes from. Um, okay, but it's um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's real. Crazy. If you're if you're Say wondering, that. it's real out there. Yeah, no, I uh, seen it. I seen it when we was walking up the stairs. I was like, oh, that's like that's the real thing. Okay, real deal. Yeah. So this old lady Puerto Rican would love that. By the way, me, I would love for her to come here. I cannot yeah. wait. I'm yeah. excited. So this old lady would tell me, she's like, just close your legs to all men. She's like, especially Puerto Rican men. She's like, those are the worst. She's like, they're all cheaters. Mm. So it was just something that stuck in my head. But it was just funny because I was more schooled by the older women than I was even like attacked or approached. That's I crazy. guess what I meant say attacked, approached by the older men. I can't relate. You know, um, black men don't cheat. Okay. Yeah. Is, mm, yeah. is that what you tell yourself? Or is that what, like, there's a code that was instilled in you that said that? Is that Black just, men like, don't cheat. <laughs> you, you I ain't been, scared of you motherfuckers. You ever, <laughs> yo, you ever been cheated on by a black guy? Uh yes, actually I have. The first Damn. person who ever cheated on me. I've only been cheated on one time. And it was a black guy? And it was. Uh, you know what? And the I, way that I found out was so was fucked up. This is complete that in bullshit. most worlds, and it's just like fate in itself again. This is bullshit. With, yeah, he ruined it. So I don't believe that. That the, quote that you said, fuck that. I'm not running with it. And neither is this I, private talk podcast because we don't believe in that how, shit. How ironic that I say a I statement think it like doesn't that. Mean, and, and, it doesn't mean black, white, any color. They all cheat. Men cheat. You know what? I want to change the rules about, about that shit, though. You know why men cheat? 
You know why men cheat? Please tell me. Because Please tell my listeners what we want to know. Here at the Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas, if you guys don't like and subscribe to this channel right now, he's about to drop some knowledge. Marcus Black is in the house. Yeah. Private Talk Conversation. Let's hear what this is. Yeah, I'm about, I'm about, I'm about, I'm about enlighten to Enlighten us. I'm about to break this shit down so it can forever and consistently be broke. Okay? <laughs> so it can be broken forever. I like it. Um, <clears throat> I think it comes down to communication. Um. So, so check this out, like from the time that we were children, right? From the time that you were little girls and little boys and everything. Men are taught to, to deny our, our innate desire to hunt. And women are taught not to accept it. Also, women are taught to deny their innate desire to be hunted. And men are taught not to accept it. We're our odds out the gate. You know what I'm saying? So, like, the reality is... Um, I feel like I need to light this joint. <laughs> Yeah, you might need to burn, burn your hell. The thing is, is like the thing is, is I'm a very like people like I'm very like I'm big on all like what you're saying, and I know it's gonna get really deep, and so I like that. But a lot of people's uh-huh. process like the like they don't it doesn't compute that way because a lot of people are either afraid or they don't have never like tapped into those like those either insecurities or yeah. some things is because that's what it is is you have to know your insecurities to know your truths. So if you can't be vulnerable in that's any situation. Bar then you can't ha- you can't know a truth because mm-hmm. if you don't know the weakness side of what it is you can never be vulnerable and know the truth on the other side that's true i'm with you i think that um a pause for me <laughs> i love that you wish that you could have these buttons over here you I, eagerly look every time i look it's, it's, I, I want to hit the button and it's driving me maybe crazy maybe one day i'll like have you just to press my buttons can i just <laughs> uh, okay I, no i see what you did there. i see what happened you like that no, I, I, I thought it was dope actually yeah, but you know, I, I hate the word, I hate the word cheating, man. Um, you know why? Because you've done it, or because you don't associate with it, or how? What do you defy as cheating? So I think cheating is a real word, and and I think it's I think it. So this is how I view. I think cheating is stepping. It's anything outside whatever we agreed upon, whether whether I'm in a relationship, a friendship, verbal, a, 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 a business in, agreement. You know what I'm saying? Like cheating is just breaching. The contract, you know what I'm saying? With so any relationship, if it's male, doesn't matter what it is. doesn't matter what the relationship is. It's a breach, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think we got to be a little more realistic about about what's real. You know what I'm saying? Like I told, I told my girl. So first of all, a lot of a lot, of, I'm like a go to for a lot of my friends and a lot of just a lot of people in general. People hit me on my Instagram, my social media, and be like, "Man, Mark, they ask me a lot of questions," and it starts with communication because I'm fortunate enough to have a woman. That I, there's nothing I can't talk to her about. But has it always been that way? Or do you, like, is it something that it's progressed throughout your relationship? Because it's, it's progressed. And it's progressed because, I, I can't even take the credit. It's because of her. Because she created the environment for honesty. She she made me come. But that takes a real woman, and I will that. Because I'll say a lot of women these days, are, they get intimidated by things that you, if you would just communicate and open that door up to a lot of things, yeah. you would understand what your partner's needs and wants are. Sure. And the more that you can communicate that is the most comfortable environment for you to be safe so you could both be on the same path mm-hmm. to make your relationship last. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I think it's about communication. I think it's about being um, honest and open. You know what I mean? Um, for me, it's one of those things where it's like, like, for example, I told her a couple of weeks ago, um, Cause she so she she obviously like I said she had a little girl about six months ago, and so about a, about a month ago I'm like man baby it's about time for you to like, you know I, I need you to get sexy you know what I'm saying like, throw on some sexy go out with your girls I'm not going like you go out with your girls she got two different rings you know what I'm saying like she got one she got one ring that's like really big that, like. It's intimidating. Don't put that ring on. Are you big time? I see. I, I would no, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. You got those two rings. It's not the two phones. It's two rings. No, but you, but but so, you're but you should have them. But you who are you are who you are. You're on this couch for a reason. Yeah. So she, so she she has a she has a ring that really stands out, and then she has a go to the gym, chill, settle, go to the mall, run around ring. You know what I mean. But then, even outside of that, it's, I wouldn't care if she took the ring off because I want her to go out with her girls. I want her to look sexy. I want her to walk past ten guys. And her, she turn around and see that they're all looking. I want and I and I and I want like she, like <laughs> this is not a green light for all men. But like women need to be hunted. You know what I'm saying? Like she need like guys got to shoot their shot. 
And then she's going to come that. back to the crib. Because, because like, it's only so far that it's going to go, like. It's the what? desire that someone still needs to know they kind of got it. Right. But then they're going back to someone who's in a, you're in a loving relationship yeah, and you're absolutely. giving her all those other things. But like you said, I get that. Like it's at the end of the day, what relationships I think work and like it's, it's give and take. And at the end of the day, we, yeah, have, sure. we, we need to have things that are we the reason why you are with her. You had a baby. You have a great relationship is because you saw her sexy. You like, you seen her in her most vulnerable, this, whatever, and all these things. So even just letting her out and being like, whatever, it's like everyone looking at your woman, you know, she's coming back to you. So that to me is even more sexy because yeah. she's mine. Because yeah, a confident mine. woman is sexier than right. someone who doesn't is unaware of who's looking out for you, who cares if you're telling her to do this, because it's just yeah. confidence. Confidence to me just, is what exudes sexiness. I need her to experience. I need her to have it. Because like when I when she walk like I tell her she's beautiful every day, but it, it over time it's only natural that it lacks impact. That she's like, well, that's that's my dude. Of course she of course you think I'm beautiful. You know what I'm saying? It 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 it, it the punch, you know, uh, loses the effect. You know what I'm saying? The punch loses power. You know what I'm saying? As as to where, you know, Joe Smo on the street can be like, man, you so damn fine. She be like, oh, for real. You know what I'm saying? And it's necessary. It feels good. It's about like, like I said, men men will never lose the desire to hunt. So what and do women you will think? Never lose the desire to sorry be to interrupt you, but what do you think? With that being said, mm -hmm. like, what do you think is like the cross between of like um, exuding like that sexiness of like how do you keep that? fire still going like how do you how did you come to the comfortability of like letting her know you, you said that she left an open flat platform out but like how, how over time was it just because you communicated is because the experiences you guys went through like how do you get your woman to be in tune with all these things that you're saying because not every person's like that and we all have our insecurities as yeah. people in general or whatever but a lot of that stems with because we can't talk to people we, we yeah you gotta just be honest though like like at the end of the day that's a grown-ass woman that's my wife, but I don't own her. She's not a she's not a piece of 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 property of mine. You know what I'm saying? And vice versa. So it's like like we have our own thoughts, we have our own opinions. You know what I mean? And what what happens is a lot of times due to religion or tradition or whatever your belief system is, like people are taught how to t what to think or how to feel, and it's like, come on, that's not real. Let's have a real conversation. The reality is, like, like as a man. The idea of settling down with one woman and and only having that woman for the rest of your life, you kidding me? It's it's mind blowing. It's scary. It's like, oh, you one female, like the rest of my life. But yet you still get into relationships that are committed relationships. Well, yeah, for sure. But but what does committed have to do with Well, I'm what saying one, what you're one, saying with like like being with one woman all the time. So if you're committed, that's one relationship, that's one woman. If you would Unless ideally um, want to be in a relationship because you want to be committed with that person for the rest of your life. If it goes there or not, we don't know because it's all an experience based situation, but the intentions are that. So if you're in a committed relationship and you step out, whatever, that's not being true to what you're saying. No, but we're not talking about stepping out. And, 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 but you said cheating. I didn't. When, I'm talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm, but right now what I'm talking about is, is um, like when you're in a relationship, I, I actually lost my train of thought just now. I want the truth. Man, that's, that's a nice. You're not button. even smoking. Yeah, but you know, contact is worse than actually. So it it's I, my fault. I actually feel it. I ain't scared of you, motherfuckers. Nah, what, what was the last thing you had said, though, man? This is live. This is how it goes. It's what it is. You know, you know I saying? just, this I mean, real. it's an open conversation, but it's like, for me, I just want to know the sense is because you stated how you and your, your girl are mm -hmm. really open yeah. and like how you, she's given you that platform of where it's really a safe place and the communication level, whatever. Right. But it's like getting to all those points of like, how did you, like you had said at that point where it's like you being, you ideally want to be with one person. Like, right. and I yeah. said, if you're individually in Ideally, when we're all in a relationship, we want to be with that person. We don't know if it's going to be marriage, not, or whatever. But that's how yeah. the cheating part goes is, like, you're still, I got if it. you knew what it was, you're still it. cheating. So it's like, Nobody that's what move. it is. Nobody move. Are you, are you ready? I got are it. you locked? Are you loaded? Yeah. Go. Yeah. So, look. So, what I was looking for is a life partner in real life. Somebody, like, I'm looking for unconditional love. And somebody that I'm gonna go through life with, I'm a, and I'm and I'm gonna ride with you to the fucking wheels fall off, and and I'm gonna put you first, and I'm gonna protect you, and I'm gonna secure you, and I'm gonna make sure 
I'm a, I'm like, I'm, I got you. Like, I got you. But it does not mean that I do not have the desire to fuck her. Now, and, yes. now, with that being said, I don't have an open relationship. And I'm not doing that because I haven't figured out a way for it to... I haven't been able to make it make sense just yet. Like, I can have... The, like, the same way I'm talking to you right now, I can talk like this to my wife. Yeah. But I, I haven't been able to find a situ or come up with a situation that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, like, you know what's fucked up? Society is fucked up, dog. Like, so, you could be a great guy, right? You take good care of your family. You take good care of your wife. We're talking about, like, emotionally, physically, and, you know, financially in a monetary space, all of that, right? I go to Vegas. I got my dick sucked. <laughs> I'm a dirt bag. Suddenly, I'm a fucking dirt bag, right? And I, I deserve to lose my family and half my income. Make that make sense. Does your wife know your dick was sucked at that time? She's going to know if I tell her. Or she's going to... Like, in order for us to end up in a situation that we're going to end up in, I either had to tell her or she had to find out. However she found out, she found out. And now I'm not shit, Right? Like, I'm like, I'm lower than low. I get what you're saying. How does that make sense? I, I deserve to lose my family because I got my dick sucked. Hey, yo, fuck off. Okay, I get what you're saying to a point. Not, not you, of course. I understand. We're, I, friend. we're I, friends. I, this is the private talk. This is, we're speaking freely. We're friends. We obviously. Get it. Yes. I know you're not that high. Fuck off to content. the idea. <laughs> fuck off to the idea. No, I get what you're saying. There's a lot of stigma, a lot of things. My thing is, again, what I, I've said all the time, my, my motto is to each his own. What works for you may not work for me. As long as it doesn't affect me in a negative way, then do what you want to do. Each relationship, but when you bring other people into it, is when it becomes an issue. If it works for your partner and you, then you have whatever. I don't think what you're doing makes you a, a, a bad person, but in your relationship, if you haven't discussed those boundaries and you're doing something, then people will perceive what you're doing, that you're being careless and you're it's doing Texas. all those things. Why You're not answering the question. I want the truth. Why can't I hit the button? I want the truth. Why what truth do, do you want? Why, why does a man no, I don't want you to lose your family, but what I'm why saying is- Why does it happen? Because if your partner doesn't know that you're getting your dick sucked, grow she's the, not going to be okay with that. Fuck what you up. said before is you're looking for a partner that's going to find your situation that it it, it it and it works that way. And there's people that are like that. But what happens is, is people get with the wrong people and make that situation work for themselves at that moment because they're so afraid of being alone that they make that situation work because they want an ideal of something that's never going to be the real thing. I hate you. So Excuse if me. you're looking for somebody Ms. who Texas. wants your dick to be sucked and your kids and family and everything will be home, there's someone out there that will do Ms. that for Ms. you. Texas, you know what's worse than getting your dick sucked in Vegas? Ooh. Ooh, that's ridiculous. You know, Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. You're going button crazy. I love my buttons. And that last so that's because you can't that, that touch them. That last <laughs> button wasn't even relative to, to what we were. I just, because I can touch them and you can't. Uh -huh. You're not. You're not sure. <laughs> that's what friends do. But, we start picking on each other. But you know what's worse than that? Like, you know what cheating is? Cheating is. Cheating is you watching, like, you watching power. What are Without, you doing? No, 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 no. <laughs> like, like if we if we like if we watch if we if we watch shows together like we, we watch Power together or Are we you watch really or we watch Snowfall. I was at the gym. I was working out. You couldn't wait till I got home to watch that with me. You're really comparing that to getting your dick sucked in you, Vegas. You knew Ghost got shot. Before. You're really thanks for ruining because I haven't watched the last two You're episodes. Bad. Yeah, You're bad. no thanks for ruining it. You're bad Ghost got shot. <sighs> okay, and we don't know who the fuck did it, but you know I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. This is complete bullshit. I hate these. Okay, buttons. you just compared watching a show without you because you're at the gym per se, probably getting your dick sucked. But and I'm watching it without you to hey, you. First of all, the, the scenario I brought up was completely hypothetical. I am Texas, saying that it's hypothetical. I, no, you didn't say that. I'm not saying I this didn't is say truth I got in my real dick time. Sucked. I didn't say, but we're Alexis, referring to you. Doing? I don't have a dick. You do. This is the only dick in the room. It's you, not me. All right. That's 
It's right. in context. All right. I'll not take, in real time context. I'll take that. Okay, so yeah. how am I supposed... Like, that's not even the same comparison. Listen. That's cheating? You got cheated Please on, tell me more. You Please, your definition. By, you your got definition. cheated on by a black guy, and now you're taking it all out on me. No, not at all. Okay. I take it out on every man. That's not you. Oh, that's, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. I feel it. I'm just kidding. It. Although, I get told that I'm intimidating all the time, which I feel like that's just men being I don't pussies. think you're intimidating at all. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. Maybe one day, one man, real man will find me out there. Perhaps. Perhaps. If not, yeah. fuck them all. Damn. Maybe I'm looking for a chick. Who knows? I'm open on both sides. There's nothing wrong with that. Me, I know. You know. I like that. Do you, be you, love you. I like that a lot. The moral of the story is people have to be themselves. People got to be true and honest. And, and I think the the key to all relationships is just great communication and, and, and full communication. You know what I'm saying? Like... I think that's important. I think your your partner should be your best friend. I agree with that. But I, everybody says that, but it don't it don't happen like that. That's true. That's what I'm saying. When it comes to people, force that and it doesn't work. People don't really realize their truth until it's like too late, and then it's like third, fourth, fifth. Sometimes happens. Maybe it doesn't happen at all, but sometimes they get it right the first time, and you know that happens. Yes. Yeah. So, are I you ready it. to play my game? What's the, what's the I don't know what's the game? Truth with Texas. You can't be afraid at this time. It's not about being afraid. Like you're you pretty know. open. I like that your contacts. You're very like. I feel like you have your own idealism of like what <clears throat> like Ms. Texas, obviously um, I need like to cheating know. is relationships are what it works for you. But you want to know what works for me? Nah, because you thought truth you with was, Texas. You thought you was gonna get me off this forty two, and you was going and, and now you're gonna slide a game through, and I was gonna I was gonna let you just finesse me. No, the finessing already happened when you got on this in this chair. That's right. That's right. All right, so let's play. Let's play the game. How how do I play? Is it like Uno? I'm like I'm like the like a worldwide Uno champion. I like Uno. Okay. So how my game, Truth with Miss Texas, is. So we're going. Hey, yo, to why you put? The, why would you when you say the truth? With me? The truth it's like a fun sex with. operator. Like yeah, it's that. like yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you have flashbacks at one time because as a child never, you I watched like called. one of those hot like those naughty lines. Oh uh, yeah, remember the Spice Channel. I don't know what that is, but I worked for one in London that I like babe stations and maybe the same thing. Spice Explain channel. to the Spice Channel. What is it? Well, I don't fully know because. Don't lie. You watched it. What is nah, it? Like? So I, I couldn't watch it. It was like the the snow, like the blurry screen, uh, you know, like when you're not supposed to be watching it. Did you see like, like half a boob and like something like something else? I saw no? the whole boob, but I seen half the ass, though. <laughs> I seen half the ass, though. Which but, did you like better? I like the ass. <laughs> for sure. Do the fuzzy snow and all. Yeah, but it even and that's what that's when I knew I was an ass man because even half the ass worked for me. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you you can keep you can keep the little nipple. You know what I'm saying? You're like, a half ass man. Well I'm <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, you going <laughs> just kidding. You would do that. <laughs> no, I take that back. But all, you but you, you you like you like walked into that, but you I have know, four you're not half ass, but you just have it's like the the you know, half booty cheek. Yeah. I have four sisters. Respect. So chances are, like when you go like around a lot of females, you're gonna see a titty. Like I was so desensitized to titties and tampons by the time I was like, "Come on." Did you ever have to go buy tampons? I bought tons of tampons. Nice. So you're totally desensitized. Yeah, completely. Like I like what is it? Heavy day, light day, which <laughs> sheer like you know, wings. What's, What's your favorite day? What, we, what do we do? Huh? What's your favorite day? None of them are my favorite. <laughs> day. I, hate, I hate them all. Have you had red wings before? Have I had them? <laughs> Gotten them, yes. Red wings? You know what that means? No. <laughs> All right. Then enlighten yeah. me. Okay. This is a perfect. After I enlighten you, we're going into these questions in this card game. <laughs> Let's just go to the card game now. No, because this is like. This like, is bullshit. <laughs> you play so many games in this motherfucking room. You don't know what red wings are? Nah. All right, guys. Private talk with. Um, Alexis, Texas. Red Wings. I hope you guys crazy. know. But if you guys don't, you should subscribe and like right now. Private Talk with Alexis, Texas. We're doing it voice. big time. Back to, back to the voice. Marcus, yeah. are you ready? Yeah. Red yeah. Wings are when you like go down on your girl when she's on her period and you have red wings on your face. I have you know that I've never had red wings. I don't plan to have red wings. Hey, it's not for everybody. I mean, no. I'm not really a fan of it, nor have I had anyone do it to me because I think that's weird. I think it's, it's not my degrading. thing, but it's something that is a thing. 
That's not there. How is that degrading? And degrading to who? Please tell me. Degrading myself. If I was to, if I was to go like, like, do you you ever like? Imagine looking in the mirror with like red wings on your face. Why look in the mirror? Just go in the shower and get over it. I'm cool. I'm not. Just be a man. All right, come on. Be be a man. If your chick is like, if that's your chick and she wants you to do the thing, like, why not? Blood on my face. You know, sometimes it's a thing. People. Nah, I pass. I'm cool. (laughs) And and you know, I'm not. I'm like, I'm not even the guy. Like. Again, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm not condoning it. I'm not something that I've done. I'm not for like that whole thing. You're not Miss really Texas weird. no more. Now you're just a Le- Alexis. No, Listen. Miss Texas. No, no, no. Because mm-hmm. you, you get that up with the Red Wings. Nope. Um, you said you didn't do it. I'm just enlightening you. Yeah, but 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 the thing is, I remember being like 15 years old, like, what? Eat pussy. I, ne- I would never. I would never. Then you get old and you eat pussy eat ass. You just, you, you would already, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just have a good time. But Red Wings is something I'm not ever going to be into. And that's okay. That's your own thing. But it is a thing, and it's a fetish to some people. Again, it's not something that I do, that's but people do, people do it. Hey, yo, There's a lot of fetishes out there that I. It's not for man, me look, or you. you so that's Jeffrey but, Dahmer vibes. Whoa, yeah, <laughs> well, like, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, that's like you eat people. <laughs> like you get off from blood being on your face. Like, do you want to bite somebody? I don't like, think it's about getting off on the you blood on your weirdo. face. It's about. <laughs> I'm cool. Like and and like. I ain't scared of you, motherfuckers. Like, like you have a mustache, like you have a beard, and it's like bloody. Like, do you feel like a you're lion? really descriptive? I like. Do you this. feel like a lion though? Like, does somebody? Do you feel like you act like I've done it, Mufasa or some <laughs> shit like that? Like you just bit into a gazelle or some shit like that? How do you? How does one feel? I feel like you're already having like scar, like dreams, flashbacks, like maybe just like a mental note right now that you're just like so like appalled about this. You want you me know, to do that? <laughs> That's, that's the last time you booing me tonight. You better than stop making me boo you. All right, let's go, <laughs> we just go to the game because because I'm not gonna go for the, the boo anymore. What, <laughs> like, what you what? Don't make come me. On, I come got the trigger finger. Don't. All it's right. not Twitter fingers. It's come trigger. On, come on, man. <laughs> all right, here that's, we go. All right, truth with Texas. Are you ready? Reset. Reset your mind. Do I even have a choice? Can you right? stop pouting? You're pouting now. now. I'm pouting. I'm pouting now. Now, now I'm pouting. Yeah. Look. This is crazy. Ready? Yeah. Got him. Yep. Ready, coach? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's get him. So you're going to pick a card, whatever. No, nah, because I feel like you're handing me this card, so I'm okay. going to do this. Well, one. you're going to pick all of them after all, but you're going to tell me what symbol is on it, and I'm going to tell you what kind of question we're going to give you. Okay. It's, a, it's the Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades. It's Ace of Spades, which I, it's, a, it's a champagne I enjoy, actually. Do you? No. yeah. yeah. All right, so the Ace of Spades question. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite ones because it's like the craziest question of the bunch because it's like my big booty, like a spade, and we're just okay. so awesome here That's at the fair. Private Talk Let me tell you something, I'm not a podcast with Alexis Texas. Yeah, shout out to all the big booties across the world, though. You know, respect to that. World. And, you know, I like to appreciate all the booties. There's small booties, there's small booties, medium booties, and big, big booties. And no. every booty love needs appreciation. Well, listen, I value little booties. I appreciate little booties. Right now. No, no, no. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But, but right now, it's a shout out to the big booties. You know, I the only thing I don't like about little booties is when they like try to twerk it and it just doesn't look the same. That's the only thing I, know, I have. The girl, only man. problem I, I have. Know, I know, I know, but that twerk that motherfucking thing with that little ass. Throw that little ass in a circle. Hey, throw it in a circle. Hey. Throw, throw that ass in a circle. Hey. hey. Hey, are you ready for it? I'm ready. All right. So, what is the weirdest sexual experience that you've ever had? Sheesh. Uh, I want the truth. I feel like I'm about to be real boring here, though. Like, well, like why do I feel like you're blushing before it even happens? Nah, <laughs> man. Um, I feel like I got nothing. Like. I, like, I'm not, like, this wild, like, I don't know. Like, let me see. Okay, do you want me to switch the question for you? Or do you no. think you can come up with something? I think I think I could, I could flip it. Like, you answer that. No, this is about you, not me. I asked enough of your questions. This is about the private. There's no uh, such thing as an a, a Yeah, no, but this is questions. about my fans want to know about you. They know about me. Private talk they don't give a fuck podcast about me. with Alexis Texas. We want to know about you. All right, all What's right. your kinkiest, naughtiest thing? So, weirdest place you've ever had? Jesus. Uh, 
I switched that on you. You didn't even expect. I, I caught it. it. No, I caught it. I caught it. And you still didn't get and it. And it's a bailout. I do. I did. I it. tried. It's We're a friends. Yeah, I yeah, tried. Yeah, I tried yeah. to like hand it off to you. I'm very standard. Like the weirdest place I ever had sex was maybe at a park or some shit like that. Like, oh, I had sex at a park one time. The sprinklers came on. Was it in a park in a car or a park outside? Park in the back? Where? A park, like a like a playground park, like a community. But you park. were just in the like. Out like we in the we open. just went to the park. And then you were the, out by a tree. Well, it was by the playground. So, but you were out in the open, not in like. Yeah, yeah for sure. And okay. then the sprinklers came on. That's boring though. Like that's not like it's not like lit. Okay. You know what I'm, I'm not Let like me... popping because you fucked at the park. Like I don't have I don't have. Have no you ever girls. made a girl squirt? I don't recall. Okay. I'm going to take that I, as a no. No, because you know what's crazy? Like, I, I don't Like, I be thinking. You told me I wasn't going to boo you anymore, and I tried not to because you're my friend now. Nah, because you I know what? Now nah, I got, I'm forced to tell I've the made truth. a girl square before. Nah, I didn't even know how to in the beginning, bullshit. but I know how. And I made a girl do it, and I made her boyfriend really mad because he never of did all, it. <laughs> first of all, let me tell you something. I would I would not allow you to minimize my importance in the bedroom because I. It's not minimizing your importance. No, no, no. Just knowing if you could do a certain no, task. No, that me, doesn't mean that it's all, not taking first, away from anything that you already do in your repertoire of, all, of Ms., tools. Miss Texas is not squirting. These bitches be peeing. <laughs> I be knowing what the fuck is up. Like that's, that's piss. <laughs> Bitch told me she was squirting before. But why is why why your squirt smell like urine? <laughs> Bitch, you didn't. Uh, that's, not, that's not. That's not. This is not that. Why? Uh, and that's so, funny. and so, I think you might have got finesse. You might have thought you made that girl squirt. What is no, even squirting? No, it's it is a it's a mixture of both. It's so not the bitch piss. Pee is, it's like female nah, ejaculate. I knew I cracked the motherfucking car. I bet you pee. So yes, it's I not have. piss. I mean, if you're fucking with girls bit, that are drunk, no, no, then yeah, bit. she's gonna piss so, all over I, you I, because so. she doesn't she doesn't want to tell you she wants to go up and go to the bathroom because she's afraid that you're you know not gonna return anything. What's going on? Nah, nah, nah. It's a mixture of both. That's what the it f- is. It it's is. a it's a both. But for me, even too, like I've made people. I've done it maybe a couple of times. I don't know, but it is very different. But it's 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 just a mixture of both. Nah. So so to now to answer your question. So you've made girls pee on you is what you're saying. And I and I not nah, not nah, girl. It's, it's it's happened before. And I, and I was pissed at the bitch. If you don't, but did you pee on me? <laughs> What'd she say? No, it's just squirt. Oh my god! I don't do this. I don't. I've never done that before. You never peed on nobody before. <laughs> if you don't move, man. I've seen someone squirt Hell across no. the room before. I seen it. So so yeah, so I went. So I went. I went to high school with this girl who ended up being a porn star. Right. What's her name? Her name was Stacy Lane, and um, and she is like, she's known for that. Like, she, and I'm like, bitch, you're peeing. Uh, she's literally urine. Uh, I don't really know. Listen, it's not, it's is, not just your, it depends, everybody, every situation. You squirt? Is, I have, but not like all the time. It's not something that's mean so that you, people have done it to me. So but you know, so you know it was piss. I know the difference, but it's not piss. It's the, like, it's the you feeling of. You can't say it's of, not piss. You said it's, you it's already the, said it's, it's a mixture. Of, like, I don't know how to explain it to you, but it's a mixture of both. But it's like, it's a feeling like when you feel like you have to pee so bad and then you finally pee somewhere and then you're just like, like that. That's what it feels. So it's, so you had to pee right when you was about to bust a nut. No, but it, it wasn't like together? it's different. It's like the it's different. Uh, Miss Texas, let me tell you something. I am not a child. You can't educate me anything. That no, no, no. I no. I can tell you this. I can't tell you what it what it what it is, but I can tell you what it's not. You don't have a vagina. You can't speak for what squirt is. I can, sm- and I can smell. Not. I can smell urine. Yeah, but that's because the girls that you've been with. That doesn't mean that you, the girls that you were accurately squirted. Listen, Maybe they were just all sweetheart. peeing on you because they didn't know like what sweetheart. it was. Sweetheart, you it should was, just. It was urine. No, you already gave me the, inf- the information and said no. it's half and half. So let's go to the next card. No, I'm not you're not gonna win this one. But I'm gonna go to the next card. I want the truth. I gave you the it truth. It was pee. It was not. It was fucking piss. <laughs> tired of this shit. We're gonna do a survey about this. I'm gonna get back. I'm, I'm gonna get to the truth shit. of this for real. We're going back to this. I'm gonna call my girl. It's bullshit. <laughs> I mean, is that piss? We'll do a lifeline. I'll call her right now. I, what? <laughs> <laughs> She'll be pissed. <laughs> what card do you have? Oh, I thought it was the motherfucking. It's the same shit. That's the Ace of Hearts. Ace of Hearts. All right, that's the romantic one of the questions. All right, you ready for that? Hold on. Yeah, what I'm is your favorite song to make love to? 
favorite song to make love to is is at this point, um, Miss Texas is politically incorrect. Why? Because they just can't say it no more. Like it's things that like you just, it's certain things that's no that you just can't say. You can't say a song that you have sex to. You can't say you enjoy it anymore. Why? Because like what is <laughs> why? Because he's currently like going to jail for a long time. Like <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. And like I and like it. and like when he wrote the song, perhaps he wasn't talking about what I was talking about. Like <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't know what he was. I didn't write the song. I wasn't at the studio. Like all I know, he 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 said something about like his mind telling him no, but his body started telling him yes, and I was like. I felt that shit on a deep level, but I don't know what he meant. And so, like, I'm not, I'm not saying I agree. Yeah, seems like you. <clears throat> Tell us. No, no. Let me hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. You know what I'm saying? Don't hold back now. I just know. He, he said, "It seems like you're ready." No, that's not what you said before. I said it again. <laughs> you know, my mind's telling me no. Yes. But my body. My body's telling me, yeah. I don't want to hurt nobody. Hey. But it's something. I must confess. And, and, and if I would have knew what I knew now, then I'd have stopped them dead in his fucking tracks and said, what the fuck do you want to confess, nigga? What, what, what do you, what you want to tell us? But I didn't. Because I was a child. It's okay. Yeah. It was a good song, but, you know. I just want to go on record saying this. Fuck it. Like, cause I already, I want to go on record saying this. Um, I do not agree or condone any of that shit. You feel me? I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't know that man. I don't hang out with that man. None of that. But if you think for two seconds I'm gonna stop listening to to that man's catalog, you are clean out your motherfucking mind and you let that shit go viral. I wouldn't give a shit. I listen to. It's a lot of weird motherfuckers who, you know, they had a good song. What you want me to do? Like, hey, music speaks to everybody differently. You got to do what works for you. Yeah. Damn that card. Are Fuck you, that card. <laughs> it's the romantic the, question. It's it supposed the to be the best. You know, it's all it's all fluffy and things. You know, yeah, you I like it. Up. Look, I'm from Chicago. Here you go. Okay. What you got? What you got? clubs all right it's a kinky question Uh-oh. i feel like they're all kinky and shit like well this is the truth with smith texas we were you know we we spoke your truth earlier now it's my truth okay are you okay with it are you, are you rocking with it i'm calm here yeah gonna, all right that candle is awesome by the way do you like that yeah it smells really good i don't know what it is it's like ambiance I tried to. Yeah, it's a vibe. It's the private talk podcast. We like to make it like a comfortable situation. Hit your L. Let you feel hit your fucking L. Hit, situation. Hit your, hit your. Nope, not doing it. Okay. All right, are you ready? Yeah. I don't like being told what to do because I do it a little bit different. I know, that's fine. Like, how you <laughs> Just want to do it? I'm cool. I'm cool. All right. <laughs> like, whatever. So, like. what I really want to know is <laughs> have you ever been attracted to your partner's friend? Sure. That's not. It's not, uh, Have you ever acted on it at every time? Absolutely not. Okay. So it's like a lot but, of times. But, huh? Like, I'm just saying a lot of times. Not that you've acted on it, but that you've thought that they were attractive. My my wife has extremely attractive friends. I done told her. Like, I ain't gonna lie to you. So <laughs> I got I got uh some of my wife friends that like I follow on, on Instagram, but it's it's certain ones that like I mute their pages. Like, bitch, I don't want to see that. Like, <laughs> What are they putting that you're not wanting to look at? They ass hanging out, all type of shit. Like, some of them are really, like, really, really attractive girls. And it's like, I tell my girl, man, that bitch bad, show they like, I don't. You don't want the, like, the the carrot dangling and, like, to, the enticing thing? I don't, you like. you just don't want to, like, be bothered You know, the it. thing is, I'm, I'm like, I'm a cool guy. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a real chill guy. Like, and I don't, I don't even want that energy. Like, when, she, when you come to my house, like, See the baby or whatever. I don't want to be like, damn. It's respectful. I've been looking at your ass yeah, 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 yeah. all day. It's respectful. Like that's yeah. gonna cause problems for you. So I just, I just, they don't even know they muted. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that, that's the, the best feature on Instagram. That's like the gift and curse of like, like the whole Instagram thing. Because you, 
they get people get mad if you don't follow them, but then you don't want to like have that yeah. fact happen yeah, too because it's like if I unfollow you now you in your feelings. I thought we was cool. We were great. Exactly. You got your ass all over your page. It's like the old school like MySpace top ten. If you like switch that up, people would get really mad at you. Bingo. What do you feel about before I get to the next question? What do you feel about the whole thing with Instagram taking away the likes for a while? How do you feel about that? I think it's healthy. I think it's extremely healthy because you got a lot of people um, who really get off from that shit. You know what I mean? It's a lot of people who have entire. I, I just people. I, I just think people put too, far too much emphasis on social media and how much likes you get. Like, post what you want because you wanted to post that shit. Say what you want because you wanted to post because you wanted to say that shit. If you like something, go like that picture because you like the picture, not because everybody because it, it got a million likes already. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like. You know, the culture dictates too much to us, and I feel like it'll be healthy, you know what I'm saying, for a little while. I agree, especially now because of everything that's going on with, like, the whole bullying and people really, really, like, wanting to know all these things. I think that it just, just to at least experiment and see where it goes. Yeah, I don't know what it's going to do, though. Exactly. I don't, the think, same, yeah. I don't think it's going to do much, but I do think that it causes a certain level of, of, of anxiety. You know what I'm saying? Um, when you post a picture and it's like, what well, happened? Didn't do well. Like, I need to delete that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. All the, and all the corny shit. And that's a lot. Of, like, girls deal with that more so. I don't know. Maybe that's not true. Maybe that's not true. All right. Girls deal with that a lot, though. I well, I think it goes both ways. Sure, Let's go sure, back to sure you do. truth with Miss Texas. Sure, sure you do. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to Private Podcast with Alexis Texas. We are going to my last question. Make so sure the Private make Talk sure Podcast. To, make, make sure y'all like and follow and add her. Yeah, subscribe to this channel. It's going to be it's awesome. It's not added. Subscribe, my bad. Yeah, you subscribe. You That's what I meant to all say. the way. I was just trying to throw the, throw the no, uh, I, next time. All right. Are you ready for this yeah, last I'm question? I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I like, kind of don't want it to go. You've been such a great guest. Your conversation's awesome. It's like, it's like, friend, are you ready for this? That's all good. All right, yeah. friend, here we go. Oh. You look so disappointed at this guy. What's the ALD? Oh. Diamond. All right, the diamond no, question. I had a lot of. Never mind. Never mind. What? Tell me. I had some good times at, at Ace of Diamond <laughs> Strip Club in LA. Like, it's really memorable times. You know what I'm saying? What'd you do there? Yo, so, so you remember when Nelly in the Tip Drill video just kind of mm -hmm. like, I, I, I tried that at ALD one time. <laughs> Did it work? I like that you said try. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know how successful it was for you. Yeah, it was. A, it was. A, yeah, but she she. <laughs> It was cool. I enjoyed myself. You know, what I mean? <laughs> you know the thing about when you have a platform, like you really got to just, you can't just say everything. Like you got to watch who you, who you tag in. All right, diamonds questions. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm ready. All right. How many people have you slept with? That's crazy. Why is that crazy? In your lifetime, how many people have you slept with? Who fucking know? I don't know. I'm asking you. The private talk podcast with Alexis Texas wants to know. Wow, you going you're going corporate on me. Now. Yeah, we corporated this stuff. Huh. I I literally don't know. Can you give me a ballpark? Are you afraid to tell me the real answer? Is this I feel like this question to some people they're like, "Man, who's listening to me? Are they going to get mad at me? Are they going to like are this is you, are we adding subtracting? Do we wink what are we doing over here? This is the truth. I want the truth. Don't make me boo you again. You said no more. I I'll take I'm, the boo. No, we're not booing. Tell me. I've been over. You know, in, I've been in, in over like two hundred and something movies. I mean, they're really. It's a lot of movies. There's a lot of movies, but the thing it's about the porn movies. world, you know, it's like the same people like over and over again. I noticed that. So it's like I noticed that. It's you know, it's there's so the partners are still up there, but the movies is you know, it doesn't really add up to as far as partners, but. Yeah, I mean, there's you know, no shame in like the game. Like you're you're in a situation in a relationship now. You're in a healthy relationship. Y'all are you know open. So why healthy. so why does it matter about the numbers? You just because not because I'm know? a Virgo and I'm very literal and, and I don't have the exact number. Well, Virgo, this Gemini wants to know. My mama's a Gemini <laughs> and it gets on my not my like what? Because we want the truth. I mean, I don't even need the button. I'll just ask you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know a like, hundred. I don't know a hundred. That's that Let's can't be there. right. Good or bad? I don't know. I'll take it. All right, let's do with it. A hundred. Because I Why do you seem so disappointed? Like I don't, I don't know. know. I done got so much head in my life. <laughs> do like does that count? Does like like That's a good question. 
You know, earlier, I, I mean, I was in one of my episodes. It was talking oh. about like the the like the the preference over head over sex. What would you prefer if you had a choice? Getting or giving? If uh, uh, getting. Oh yeah. So if you had to like do with that, and you had to go like, hey, you were gonna like be. This is not you gonna make any sense. Or sex. I got so much head in my life. But so I'm, now you just want sex. I prefer sex. Okay. That's not, that's your choice. The last person that I asked that, he said it was head, which I didn't understand that. Because for me, oh yes, I head. do prefer like oral sex and something like that. But if I had a choice, I'm going to sex. Just, just, just give me, just give me the, give me the thing, man. Just, just give, give me, me I, the thing. Just give me the honey bun. That's, all, that's what I was looking for. That's what I came for. Is that what you call your wife's? Honey, honey bun? Man, that honey bun. <laughs> I can't wait to meet the honey bun. I'm excited. She's crazy. And she's way, like, she doesn't have a filter. I be sitting here back here chilling, like, bro, nuts. What's the craziest thing y'all have done sexually? Made a baby. <laughs> How is that crazy? That's, that's wild. That's it, a think beautiful about thing. That, like, that's yo, a beautiful you like, thing. You could, but at the time, you didn't know when that happened, at that experience, that it was a, making the baby nah, you know, you know, it's, you know what's crazy is, like, B is, like, very, very, like, um. I'm going to ask her. She'll tell me the truth. She might you said not. she has no filter. You sit back. That's what you just told me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's my baby. We have a good time. I like it. You know what I'm saying? That little, let me tell you something. Big things come in small packages. Hey, that, that smile on your face does it all. That thing right there, man. Woo. Ooh. I like it a lot. You know? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm, I've never been. I've never been one of those guys that like brag about they girls sexually for real. You know what I'm saying? Because like when you do that too much, then like it be people around you that be looking at your wife like, "Damn, it's like that." I want to hit that. Hey, bro, check this out, man. If you're not willing to die over Brooke Valentine, bro, leave that alone. It's facts, though. I, mean, I encourage that because I am like I'm. I'm leaving over. So like, <laughs> like let's be that's the truth. I just want to be clear. That I respect that. I love that. I love hey, love. Yo, There's yo. not a lot of people that like really support love. And I, you know, I've been in relationships in my business before, and yeah. there was really like trials and tribulations of people like hating that we were there. But into my face, they would be like, "Oh, we love it together." But they would just before. So the fact that you can just openly say that yeah. that's that's awesome. That's a beautiful that's my thing. Baby. Yeah, Miss sure. Texas. Let me tell you something. I like this podcast. Thank you. I appreciate I, and, and, it. And I think it's um. I think it's gonna work for. You. I think everybody should watch this podcast. I think they should really tap in, and um, I think it's fun. I think you get a lot of information that you that the app. This is I I learned a lot of stuff that like, I mean, come on, like where you like where you gonna get this shit from? Like where you gonna like meet a a dope ass pretty balling like basketball playing porn star like with a jump shot i like that you put the basketball playing i like that yeah you know what i'm saying that worked out like an old folks home you know what i'm saying and like she's a gemini like Throwing me all you, the way into the bus for where, everything yes, where do you get those vibes from you can't just get them vibes anywhere that's why they call the vibes baby real i appreciate that though that's what i like to bring with this whole thing the private talk podcast is about feeling each other feeling the vibe just like getting it all out there and just go back to the other voice yeah Close no. out strong. No, that's not my close out. That was just me talking to you and telling you how great I like that whole all hate those in, things. You hate instructions. I do. I'm you a rebel. I'm a rebel you. without a cause. Yeah, you don't I even don't, have a reason. No, I have none. I just have always been that way. If you tell me something, I'm gonna do it put, the wrong put, way put your, for put your, your put, purpose. Put your and left hand mine. up real quick. No, I'm not ever gonna do what you tell me to I do. You, you should have put your right Private hand up. Private talk though. podcast with Alexis right. Texas. I Good hope times, you guys man. have had an amazing time with me and my guest, Marcus Black. I love you guys so much. Thank you for subscribing and liking to this channel. To I hope voice. that you guys get this podcast and love it just as much as I like talking about all these things. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Can't wait for the next one.